dark in here. Let me just get some lights on. And by lights, I mean the sunlight, <laughs> the blinds. Okay. So far we have three. It's still really dark in here. Hmm. I might move to the other room. It's just so cozy in this room. This is our living room. We just got a new couch, so it's really comfy. And we have a new nice soft blanket. Um, but yeah, I see the vote so far is to sew my ballet slippers first. So for those of you who don't know, my name's Jasmine McDonald. I post ballet and fitness related videos every single Tuesday, Thursday, and now Sunday. So I posted a video earlier, a little, um, I posted a kid's video, which was really fun to do. I haven't done one in a couple of months, so it was really nice to get back into that because I love teaching kids. Um, but today I'm gonna be sewing my Gainer Mindens, and I'm also going to be sewing my ballet slippers. So without further ado, I think I'll get started in the ballet slippers first. I'm just gonna move you guys because you guys don't have the best lighting. That might, I'm just gonna move my plants. There's no feature in um, YouTube Live to like preview how your setup looks before. You have that feature in TikTok and in Instagram, but in YouTube you don't. So, oh, that's so much better. Ah, oh my God, stop. Okay, there we go. Ta -da. So you guys are sitting nice and comfy on the table there. Let's get started with the ballet slippers. So for the longest time with these ballet slippers, I've just been tying them up when I'm teaching because I saved the sewing part to sew with you guys. Um, for ballet slippers, this is just really simple to sew them. So I like to try them on first. Just put them on my foot and usually I have a pen and I'll kind of mark on the, the outside or the inside of where I want to sew them to. Like this is what I've been doing for now. I've literally just been tying them in a knot underneath my foot like this. Just like that, I've been tying them like this and it doesn't, it's not the most professional thing to do by any means, but it works. It keeps my shoes on. Um, so if any of you aren't familiar with ballet, so there's two types of ballet shoes for ballerinas. For girl ballerinas, they either wear point shoes where they stand up on their toes and they also wear their ballet slippers. So I'm going to be sewing my ballet slippers very first. These are the kind of shoes you'd wear at bar to practice in. These shoes are used for performances. So I've sewn one pair or one shoe from the pair already. I haven't sewn the second one because I want to show you guys some tips and tricks I do to sew. Now these are gainers, so they're already broken in. I also have some freeds with me if you guys want to see like how I break them in. Ooh, 50-50 for point shoes and ballet slippers now. Hmm, guys, should I vote? Ooh, I don't know which ones to sew first, my point shoes or my ballet slippers. Like I need to sew both. My point shoes, I have one sewn, so I've been <laughs> wearing really dead shoes. Hmm. I'm gonna wait another minute to see if I should sew my point shoes or my ballet slippers. <laughs> Put them side by side like this. Point shoes or ballet slippers, which one, which one? Hmm, I need both, because I need these to practice in, and I definitely need to sew my elastics on these and my ribbons. They're so clean and so brand new. I haven't worn them yet. Um, but I'll have a chance this week. I'm going to be going back in the studio doing class. I'm so excited for that. I haven't done class in two years, like a full ballet class, traveling across the studio, doing pirouettes, doing fouettes. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna start with my ballet shoes because those are the easiest ones and I just wanna get them over with. And then I'm gonna be sewing my point shoes because again, the ballet shoes are super easy to sew. And I need them more than the point shoes. I need them for teaching. Um, do I have any dance teachers watching right now? Anybody who likes teaching? I think the chat should be open for people if you want to. Um, oh, that lighting's way better. I don't know what's up with the lighting. Hmm. Anyways, the stitch kit that I use, by the way, is from the shoe room. And it's called Stitch Kit. <laughs> it's literally called Stitch Kit. And it is $12, but it comes with a whole ton 
of yarn. Now, I like the original one personally. It's the bun head stitch kit. So it came like this. Anybody else remember this? Okay, I'm getting votes for point shoes. Okay, I'm gonna get my point shoes. The people have spoken, point shoes first. I'm sorry, ballet slippers, you can survive. I'm gonna start with my point shoes. That one's winning for sure. Now I have two sets of stitch kits. I'm gonna use the one that's being the least used. Um, actually, no, the one that's been the most used because I don't have as much thread anymore in it and I wanna use it up before I start using the brand new one. So I'm gonna be using this stitch kit to sew my point shoes. So I'm gonna give you like a little tour on my first pair of shoe or my first shoe that's already sewn. So this one has two sets of elastics, which I need. I need two sets of elastics like this. And I just sew it on the inside right here. Like that. Sew it right there. And then I'm a bit of a cheater when it comes to the ribbons and I sew them on the outside which you're not supposed to do, but to each their own. So I sew my ribbons on the outside like this. This is definitely not premium sewing in the least, in the slightest. This is by far the most average sewing I've ever seen in my life, <laughs> like beginner, but it works. Um, so I sew my elastics, sorry, my elastics are also on the outside, but I sew my ribbons on the outside too. So I'm gonna try one on to show you guys what it actually looks like. Um, so I have my toe spacers like this, and I put these in between my big toe and my second toe, because I've got huge bunions. So I'm gonna put one toe spacer in, like that. And the secret to not, letting your shoes kill your toenails is to wear these toe pads. So I put the toe pads on top like this and usually you wear tights as well. And then you put the point shoe like so. There we go. So that's what it looks like when it's sewn. And from close up, you can absolutely see the stitching on the outside, but from far away, you really can't tell. Comment if you can tell. Can you guys tell? Like, not at all. I can't. Maybe it's the camera, but you can't tell that much. So then I'll just tie them like this. I haven't cut or cauterized the ribbons either. And what I like to do is I'll cut my ribbons to where I need them. And then I actually use a lighter to kind of cauterize the ends so that they don't fray because it is still like a ribbon and it will fray. So let me go get, do I have a lighter? I do. Right here. Now, if you don't have a lighter at home with you, you can also use like clear nail polish. That's way safer than using a lighter. Um, but yeah, I would just use a lighter on the edges of the point shoe, just so it doesn't like fray. Like, I don't know if you can see it close, but it's fraying a little bit. So then I'll just tuck these underneath like this. Voila. That's one shoe that's already sewn. Hmm. Yep, and that's it. And they stay on me. Again, close up, you can see how I sewed it on the outside, but from far away, you can't tell at all. And these are not broken in. I've never worn these shoes except for like a TikTok or for an Instagram video. But I'll show you what they look like. I'll put you guys on the floor. Should be able to see still. Don't mind the dog bed. This is what they look like when they're all sewn. So I only have the one sewn for now. I have a video on how I sew them too. Um, on my YouTube channel if you want to check that out. But this is what they look like when they're all sewn. So obviously, you know what? I'm actually going to sit on the floor because <laughs> that's a lot more comfy. I'm just going to move the dog bed. But this one's not sewn, but I'll show you what it looks like when it's not sewn on point. Um, where's my toe spacers? Ugh. 
Here we go. This is a skort, by the way, so it has like shorts, so don't worry. <laughs> it's like a dance skirt. So got my point shoes all sewn. I'm gonna put on here. Here's the one shoe that's not sewn. So you can see the difference, like this one that's sewn and then this one that's not. Like this. And this one's a lot more supportive too because the um, ribbons that I use are actually elastic ribbons. I actually got a comment from one of my teachers that it looks like I'm wearing band-aids on my foot and it kind of does, I can see it now, it totally does. But you can see the difference if I were to roll through here like that to do a releve, my shoes would stay, oh, that was a bad example. They usually would stay on, I just don't have this tight enough, but they would stay on, right? I could do a jump, I could do a pirouette and not worry, but this without the ribbon and elastic, almost immediately. So you definitely need to sew those on. But Yeah, I cannot dance with this one not sewn. Oh my gosh, it's been like months since I've been on point too. So this feels so nice. This feels so weird. Okay, let's sew this one. I'm just gonna keep this one on because it's comfy anyways. So this one I'm gonna sew. Hum. Where'd my stitch kit go? How am I losing everything? <laughs> okay, let's get started. I also need, I'm gonna start with the elastics because they're the worst ones to sew. Quite frankly, they're the worst. So it comes like this. This is how the elastics look, this length. And then what I do is I fold them in half and I'm gonna cut them. So I need a pair of scissors for this as well. So again, they're this length and it comes in two and then you cut them in half to be the shape. In the same way with ballet shoes, they go from one end all the way to the other end. Some dancers keep them on the heel only. So it's like a, I don't know, a little loop but I prefer to do it straight across. I used to also put an elastic on the vamp so I didn't go over my box and over my shoe. Um, but quite frankly, I'm older now and <laughs> I don't need it as much. My flexibility is going a little bit down. So I'm just gonna go get a pair of scissors for this and then be right back to sew on the elastics and the ribbons, which I'm gonna use from an old pair of shoes. Cause I can't find the new ones unless they're in that bag somewhere. Okay, got the scissors. Oh, okay. So again, starting with the elastics first, that's the part that goes across the shoe like this and mostly keeps it on. Um, how do I get this out? Did you ever try ribbons that are completely elastic so when you sew both sides, it would come out basically like a loop? Or did you ever hear of this method? I've actually heard of that method. Mir Mare's Pearl, I, th I hope I'm saying your name right. Um, yes, I've heard of this method and one of my students actually does this. This is the first time that I saw it. She like looped it around and it was already sewn so that she didn't have to tie them. It was really cool. I actually don't know how to do that, so I'd have to do more research before I do it, but I've definitely seen dancers do that before. Again, one of my students does it. It's really cool. I'll have to ask her next time how to do it. I think she sews on either end, like you said, and then loops it around so she doesn't have to tie them. Personally, I like to tie them because what's nice about tying your point shoes is that you can adjust the tightness to how much you need. Like I have elastic ribbons. They're stretchy. They're not the regular ribbons that are like, you know, on normal point shoes. 
um, that some people get. The older ones, these are like newer technology and have elastic in them. So you can actually pull them. So I like using these for like tightness adjustments. Um, I'm good, thank you, Leslie Griffin. How are you? I hope you're having a nice day. Um, hi, Dante. It's nice to be on live. Honestly, I've never done a live. And I think later on this afternoon, we're gonna put up our Christmas tree and we're going to do a live on TikTok or Instagram. I should do a poll as well if I should do it live on TikTok or Instagram because I can't decide. TikTok, you can get a bigger reach. Instagram for live, it only can be people following you. And I know not everybody on my YouTube ch channel follows my Instagram because my Instagram doesn't have that many followers, frankly. Um, still trying to master that rap. Yeah, did you want a tutorial while I'm on here? I have one shoe on anyways before I get sewing. Not that I'm trying to procrastinate sewing because I love sewing. I'm kidding. Nobody loves sewing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to tie it again. Do you like Sundays? I love Sundays. They're my favorite. I only had one class this morning. Um, it was really easy. Just a great student, like all my students. Um, I love Sunday mornings because we just kind of hang out, have coffee, chill on the couch. So yeah, for my wrap for Froji and Slip, um, just to go over it again. So here's the elastics and I do them crossed because I have archier feet. So it just keeps them in my shoe better and keeps the heel on. So I take the outside personally and I pull it up and across as tight as I can go. I wrap it around my ankle a few times, but not that tight around my ankle. Cause if I wrap it really tight around my ankle, then I'm gonna hurt my Achilles. So I actually loosen the grip a bit. So again, I pull it across like this and I wrap it looser around my ankle two or three times, depending on how long the ribbon is. And then the inside, I try to pull it up like this across and I hold this one on the other side and around and around again. And then once I tie it, I put it, oh dear, I'm bad at tying today. I put it right underneath. And then you see when it's close up, you can't see where the tie is, right? And that's the point. You don't want to have a big bow tie at the top or at the front. You want it to be really seamless and you want the shoes to look like it's part of your leg rather than this big clunky thing. So that's why ballerinas take so long to break in their shoes and make sure it does look like it's part of their, <laughs> their leg and their foot rather than a big chunk. Um, Saturdays and Sundays are awesome. Saturdays are probably my favorite because that's when I teach in person. And I teach like little itty bitty kids and they're so cute. Oh my gosh. They're like four years old and they call me Miss Jasmine. It's the cutest. You're welcome, Froji and Slip. Um, so yeah, that's how I tow the toe. To <laughs> that's how I tie this shoe. Usually I have a double espresso by now and I only had a coffee. I'm definitely a coffee addict. Are you guys coffee addicts? I surely am. So the vote, the verdict is point shoes. I figured point shoes are more interesting than flat shoes anyways. Ooh, what's with the lighting? Stop. So I have the scissors now. I'm gonna start with the elastics first thing. So like I mentioned before, the elastics that come in the package that I get, they're from the shoe room. I actually went to the National Ballet School of Canada in Toronto. Um, I get this, it also came with a stretch ribbon, which I don't know where it is, frankly. Um, it comes with the ribbon and the elastic. So I ordered these online and they came to my door in like two days, which is incredible. So I have my elastic, which I fold in half and I'm gonna cut. Then I do it again with the second one. I fold it in half and I cut it. Now, these are not the same size that I need. These are actually too long. So what I'm gonna do is I should do it on the other foot because I'm doing the other shoe. So I'm gonna slide this one on really quick. There's my thing. Again, guys, I'm wearing shorts underneath, so don't worry. I didn't wanna wear long pants that would get in the way of my shoes, um, but I do have shorts underneath, I promise. This skirt's actually from Aerie and I got it also online. Um, also, got delivered to the store. So I paid for it at the store and ordered it through online because they were out in person. And it came to the store in like two days, which is awesome. 
So I've got the second shoe on that's not sewn. See the difference with this one and this one that's sewn? So I'm gonna take the elastic and I sew it in the seam. Whoop. I sew it on the seam, right there. Right on the seam and a little bit under. So there's a couple of tricks to do this, but this is what works for me. I sew it right below the seam, right here. And then I'm gonna pull it across. So I, about, I sew it about like a centimeter from the drawstring and you don't wanna sew through the drawstring because then you can't tighten the drawstring later. So then I pull it tightly across as tight as I would want it on my, on my foot. So I pull it tightly across and then on the other side, I'll shuffle to the other side. <laughs> so I got the inside, I pull it tightly across and I put it to my heel and you see how much fabric's left at the end. Normally I would have a pen and I would mark it off there or I would use a pin, but for now I'm just gonna use my finger and I'm gonna cut off about that much. Like no more than half an inch or like a couple centimeters. So I have that much and what I do is because I like both sides to be pretty even, I'm actually gonna do it on both sides. So the outside, the same thing, below the seam, not above the seam, because if it's above the seam, you're gonna get a huge string of elastics across and that doesn't look pretty. So you kind of want to keep the elastics hidden underneath the ribbons, that's kind of the point. So you don't see the elastics as much, but the ribbons you can see because they're nice. Um, but I sew this underneath the seam as well. Same thing, I pull it across and I see how much I need to cut. It's about the same, maybe a little bit more. And then since I don't need to do the measurements again really, I would do the same thing for the other foot, which I just have excess elastic. So I'll just keep these for the next set of shoes. Um, right back in that baggie. And I don't know what to do with these pieces, frankly. <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep them. I don't know, I'll figure out something to do with them. So yeah, I'm gonna take this shoe off. I'm just gonna turn the Xbox off too because it keeps turning itself on, it's really weird. There we go. Okay, let's see. Yes, Saturdays and Sundays. They're my favorite days too, Andrew Lyon. I always do crisscross elastics for Audrey and Slip because I have archier feet. So for those of you who don't know, ballerinas always want like archier, more flexible feet. So rather than your foot being pointed like this much, Everybody kind of wants to have archier feet. Now, a couple of not so great things that come with that are um, being overly flexible to the point where you don't have as much strength. So I always do overcross or double cross my elastics because, you know, my feet are archier. So if I don't, sometimes my shoe, this has happened on stage before, where my foot actually pops out of my shoe. And that was not fun in the slightest. I also don't know what's happening to this lighting. It's almost too bright now. <laughs> but anyways, um, I'm gonna get to sewing. So a couple of quick tips for sewing. The stitch kit comes in the same kind of pinkish color that your shoes are usually in. This pink, orangey pink. So I use this and then I loop. I've already put this one on. So I'll just redo it for you guys. So what I do is I have this much string for now. Usually I would try to put it out to my wingspan. <laughs> so from one hand to the other hand, and I'm gonna loop it through the needle. I know it's kind of hard to see because the needle's really small. Actually, this needle's really big. For those of you sewers out there, this is a huge heavy duty needle <laughs> compared to the ones that you buy at the stitch, um, like Stitch It or something. So this is a pretty, it's really hard to see, oh my goodness. It's a big needle. So I'm gonna thread it through, which this is always my least favorite part because I'm so bad at it. If I get really frustrated, often I'll just like loop it through like this. I'll kind of make another loop and then just try to wiggle it through. There we go. So once I put it through, I double it. So I make a double loop to make it stronger to kind of reinforce the string so that it doesn't pop off, especially with Gainer Mindens. The fabric's actually different and the satin's much different than Freed's are. 
So I have a pair of freeds over to my side, which I'll try on after I start sewing these ones, after I sew the elastics. But the satin's very different. It's very, very different. So now that I have my needle and thread all set up, there we go. I take my, where's my elastic? There we go. So I take my elastic. I'll get closer to you guys. Kind of shimmy in. Does, do gainers last longer? They absolutely do. So gainer mindens, before I start sewing this one, I'll show you. I have the medium strength ones that come in different strengths. So there's strong, that's green. There's medium, that's yellow, I think. And then there's light, like not very strong. So they're really bendy that come in like a pink or a purple. Now they have five. They used to have three. Now they have five. But the ones that I have are the medium. So they're yellow. I don't know if you can see, it's hard to see in this lighting, I know. I might move to a different room, but it's yellow right there. That's the shank of the shoe. So the shank is this part in the center. This is the box that holds your toes into the shoe and keeps you on your toes. The shank is the supportive part underneath here on the inside. So shank and gainer mindens is plastic, like plastic, meaning if I bend it that much, it goes back. I'm like automatically, same thing this way, it goes back. If I were to do that with freeds, they're made of like a wood kind of material. So I've got a pair of freeds right here. This is the inside of my freeds. The difference is that this, I can actually pull these open because these are done. That's wood. So when you break it, which I don't want to do now because I'm still kind of using these. If you break it, that's it for these shoes and you can't go back. So these ones absolutely do not last longer. I would go through a pair of freeds in one week versus these would last months. So that's why I opt for Gainer Mindens, um, mostly because of that, also because they help prevent injuries. Um, if you are if you have flexible feet like I am, I do, um, then you're not killing shoes and going over your box too much and you're not gonna snap your ankle. <laughs> yeah, you're killing your shoes so fast. I think you'll get some gainers next. Definitely check with your dance teacher too. I highly recommend use uh, talking to your dance teacher and asking because if you're under the age of like 18, you're not a professional yet, I would train in Freed's and I would train in any other shoe than Gainer Mindens because the thing with Gainer Mindens is even though they last a long time and they're more affordable in that sense, they don't let you roll through as easily. And that's the kind of strengthening you need when you're a student. So you need to learn how to roll through your shoe really well and sustain your strength on your box rather than letting the shoe do the work for you. So with these, they kind of are shaped like this anyways, and they kind of prop you up. So if I was a student, I wouldn't want to be propped up all the time because then my strength would be lacking because the shoes would be doing the work for me. So definitely check with your dance teacher. Um, if you're over the age of 18 or 20 and you're dancing a while um, and you have really strong feet, gainers are great. Because I didn't start using gainers until I joined a company where I was going through shoes so often, like really, really often, um, that it wasn't an option. Plus. They were actually the shoes that the company gave us, which is surprising because most companies give out freeds, um, but my company gave out gainers because it was more affordable. And the thing with dance companies is they try to um, give every ballerina the same pair of shoes because it looks more synonymous and it looks more fluid with everybody rather than everybody having different styles of shoes. I hope that answered your question. But definitely try it out at the dance shop too. The girls that work at dance shops usually know a lot about fitting. Um, they see like hundreds of thousands of feet in their lifetime. So go check out the dance shop and ask them their opinion. Um, personally, gainers work really well for me um, to a certain point. So it definitely depends on your foot type because everybody's different. And I know point shoes are super expensive. <laughs> um, gainers are also actually really expensive. I think these ones were like $140, not including shipping and tax. They're really expensive. So I haven't done class in two years and I'm so excited. I'm actually going to be doing my first ballet class like tomorrow in a dance studio, full out. Um, I'm super excited, I'm super excited. So yeah, I'm already sewing the elastics and I'm just pushing it straight through. Because since I double cross my elastics, I actually sew my 
ribbons on top of them. So I don't really care how it looks on this side. See, I'm sewing it straight through, straight through. Rather than going through the inside, it just saves me time. And the thing is, I also double up my elastic or my um, thread so that it's stronger. I've seen girls also use dental floss. I've used that before too. And that's actually stronger. That's the strongest that you can use, but I found it always got tangled and it was so annoying to sew with. So I gave up pretty early, but yeah. Um, so yeah, just sewing the outside of my point shoes. Guys, should I move rooms? Is this lighting really bad? Be honest, because I can move to a different room if the lighting's really weird. I feel like it's weird. Just let me know. So yeah. Okay. I miss being in a studio. You know, I was watching some vlogs from Luna Montana and I'm so jealous of um, people in like California right now that have adult ballet classes again. I mean, I teach adult ballet and I have my own clients, but it's not the same like doing my own class. I love having a variety of teachers and teaching styles. So I miss being in a studio atmosphere too, like with other dancers. I mean, I'm the teacher every day. It's kind of nice to be the student once in a while too, right? Does anybody else feel like that way or the opposite? Is anybody else super grateful that they're not able to go to the studio? I doubt it, but I mean, I'm grateful that um, we're all healthy here and, you know, could be a lot worse. But still, the lighting is good. Thank goodness. Okay, good. <laughs> I couldn't tell because this room doesn't get as much lighting um, as the other room, but I found the other room had too much lighting, so it was too bright. But this one's weird because it's at the back of the house, so it um, gets like the back lighting and it has the windows, again, at the back where they don't get direct sunlight, so I couldn't tell if it was good lighting or not. But yeah, there we go. Okay, so I have one side of my elastics already sewn. Oh, you okay? <laughs> Did you guys hear that? <laughs> Steve just dropped something and it sounded really scary. All right, so I'll show you guys once this part's done. For some reason in my head, I remember sewing these gainers being way more of a pain in my butt than it's proving to be right now. But I'm also doing an easier part right now. So when I tie it off, that's always a struggle for me because I don't go straight through to tie it off. I try to tie it off and end. Come on, focus. Maybe I'll turn those blinds down. I try to tie the knot on the inside so that you don't see a big ugly knot on the outside. There we go. So as you can see again on these ones that I have sewn, you actually can't see like any of the sewing really. I know the lighting's kind of weird, but you can't see any of the knots. It's pretty seamless. And when you run your hand across it too, it's pretty smooth. And that's the goal, right? To be honest though, you can't see that much on stage. Like in my experience, you can see if the shoes are dirty, but you can't see if the sewing is really bad because I'm Look at, I'm terrible at sewing. Oh my gosh. I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm just trying to tie a knot and this is not working out. Um, but yeah, on stage, you really can't tell if the sewing's not the best. So why bother making it perfect sewing? So for those of you that are having your parents sew your shoes, I would highly recommend you sew them yourself. Um, mostly because then you get a feel of how you want your shoes to be customized. Because when you have somebody else sew them, they can't do it to exactly how you want. I mean, I know my first pair of shoes, my mom sewed, but after that, it was all up to me. When I went to ballet school, um, I was sewing my own shoes every night in the corridor. For those of you that don't know, I went to professional ballet school, National Ballet School of Canada in Toronto. Um, and I lived in the dorms there. So... 
I lived away from home for six years for, I went to the school for four years and then I graduated and did the post-secondary training. So I was in Toronto for six years at that school and I was sewing my own shoes. Like I went through a pair of shoes every week, every single week. So this is a good example of how I would actually set up my sewing. So I grab my thread, I pull it across from one side, oops, to the next, like this. And then I'm gonna cut it, Ta -da! like this. I wore lipstick today and I'm getting lipstick like all over the thread and stuff. <laughs> there we go. And you should have about that much thread. I might put you guys on the table because you guys are on the floor right now. That's not very courteous of me to put my guests on the floor because you guys are like my guests, my friends. I was thinking the other day, thank goodness for online presence because this year has been so lonely for so many people and it's been so nice to connect with so many different people all over and across the world. That's actually better lighting, but then you can't see the shoes. So what I'm gonna do is put you like that and I'm gonna sit, I wish I had like a fluffy blanket I could sit on. I'm looking at one right now, I know, but. <laughs> so yeah, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, this year has been really, really lonely for a lot of people and it's been nice that we can connect like online with so many different people. I mean, never in my life did I think that I would be like generating income online, staying at home. I mean, my YouTube's not monetized or anything. Like it's not, not even close. Um, but like teaching online, being able to stay in the comfort of my home, teaching online, um, you know, that's pretty much my only online income. <laughs> Would you guys ever want like a video on income streams online? Cause I have a few, I don't honestly have a lot and that's not really my niche or my specialty. Um, but I have a few from uh, like reselling things online to tutoring online to doing um, like Fiverr things online, things like that. So now I'm on the second part. Hi Steve. Yep. Sorry, That's okay. We have two people on here right now. Hello. Hello. Uh, that was Steve, he's going by. What are you doing again? Oh, you're taking Elsa for a walk? Aw, what a lucky dog. She's a very lucky dog. Have fun. It's really nice being able to um, be close to the water. If you guys watched my vlog, you guys know we recently moved um, into our first house together, which has been really fun. It's been really fun decorating, honestly. My mom comes up once a week and she'll bring a ton of stuff like the blanket that you see right here, some pillows, which I should give you guys a full couch tour. <gasps> Mom, if you're watching this, I hope um, you approve of the design. Right now, the couches, the couches, the pillows are in the corner, um, just like you put them when you were here. And we have the blanket on the end of the couch. So I have a vlog going up this week, guys, and I'm super excited for it too. Um, I kind of vlogged two days and the video is like 20 minutes long. Um, I tried to cut it down, but I don't know. I was just kind of, it is really fun to just vlog. It is. I know it's not anything to do with my specialty being a ballerina. It kind of is, because I'll be going to ballet class or teaching and that's in the vlog. I won't give it away too much, but it just feels like I'm hanging out with friends. And I don't know if that sounds like, I don't know. 
sad because like I know you guys have your lives and you're just watching me through a screen but it doesn't feel like that it feels like I'm hanging out with friends even right now right I feel like that too when I watch my favorite youtubers um I love watching Luna Montana like she's in California and she does ballet videos kind of similarly um I like watching who else do I watch a lot of American YouTubers like Claudia Salewski, um, who else? I used to watch Joy Womack a lot. Um, I haven't watched a lot of her videos lately, but that would be fun to do this afternoon. Um, yeah, I'm glad you don't think it's sad either, Angelion. I hope I'm saying your name right too. It's a really pretty name. Um, yeah, I don't think it's sad either because I feel like a lot of people have been stuck at home this year and have found um, either um, fulfillment or happiness through online presences. Like, I know during the first lockdown, um, I was watching a lot of vlogs and I think peak time to be a YouTuber was then. So I wish I'd hopped on it sooner because I feel like, I don't know, we could have been friends earlier. <laughs> but being said, I'm grateful for starting it. Steve was actually the one that pushed me. Aw. Steve was actually the one that pushed me to start a YouTube channel because um, the studio I was at before um, COVID-19 closed permanently, and that was so devastating. Like, all the kids didn't have a dance studio anymore, um, let alone they didn't have time to spend with their friends. Like, this year's been hard on the kids. It's been difficult. It's been so devastating. They've been the true heroes all 2020 and 2021. Um, so yeah, after that studio closed, Steve was like, well, why don't you start a blog? And I was like, well, nobody really reads blogs. He's like, well, start a YouTube channel. And I was like, nah, I'm so embarrassing though. <laughs> Am I embarrassing Steve? I don't think he heard that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's been fun. It's been really fun, especially because it's something that's so easy and it's given me a lot of confidence, I think, because before I started YouTube and before I started, even I recently started a TikTok and it's been so much fun. And what I love about these online platforms is that people are just unapologetically themselves. I mean, what do you have to lose, right? If you just share your personality with the world, what's the worst thing that happens? You don't get views, so what? You still put yourself out there and it's fun. Best thing to happen is you make a friend doing it. That's the worst thing to happen, that you make friends doing it. Like, so, hashtag no regrets. Have you guys seen that movie, We Are The Millers? It's so funny. I think it's that movie. Someone comment down below, because I'm trying to think. I think it's that movie. We are the Millers, and the guy gets hashtag no regrets, like R-A-G. So, <laughs> that being said, update on the shoes. I have sewn one, two, elastics. I'm sorry. I'm so weird. Okay, <laughs> enough. So, another quick tip that people do to decide the placement of their ribbons and elastics is they fold the heel of their shoe upwards like this and then wherever it lands I've kind of done that naturally they would sew the ribbons or the elastics if they're doing double cross elastics so that kind of works out perfectly so again if you're a first timer sewing your point shoes try this method fold your shoes up like this and then sew the ribbons here the first video I watched was part one of your ballet costume try-on and good sewing. I need to learn sewing. Honestly, sewing point shoes is one of the easier things to do. I tried to learn to sew like clothes during COVID and it's, it is not, it is not my specialty in the slightest. Um, but yeah, sewing point shoes, as long as you get the thread through the shoe like that, you're golden. See, like, how do you see that on stage? There's no way you can even see that on stage. You know? The inside looks terrible. <laughs> I am not a good sewer. Ah! 
But um, yeah, I was not expecting that video, my leotard chime hauls to, I don't want to say blow up because like they have, they don't have like millions of views, but they're the most viewed videos on my YouTube channel by far. Um, and honestly, I get it because I watch those videos 24 seven too. Uh, my favorite videos to watch ballet content related or either point shoe related videos, ballet class related videos, like a little vlog going to ballet class, get ready with me and leotard chime hauls because who doesn't love watching um, like a fashion show, but ballet version, even on TikTok, I watch the same thing. Do you guys also watch the same things like leotard chime hauls, point shoe reviews? They're my favorite thing to watch. It's just, it's so interesting. Even if it's like, some random brand in Ukraine that I could never afford to buy because the shipping would be exorbitant amount of money. Um, it's still really fun to watch. It's just, I love watching the fit of leotards. I, wa I love watching um, how people look so confident too in them. And I think um, that was my favorite part about filming the video. I felt so confident, like, you know, I just felt, I like to feel pretty in my leotards, you know? That's why I love, ballet so much it gives me confidence and I hope it gives you guys confidence too if you're pursuing ballet or if you um, enjoy doing it in your spare time like for fun I'm glad I'm not the only one yeah no I watch them like all the time even clothes ones so right now I'm doing the back ribbon the back ribbon I sew on the outside because I'm lazy <laughs> to be honest so I'm sewing it on the outside just like this and the same method. I sew it through, actually I don't, I messed up. I messed it up. Ah! <laughs> it's okay, I can rectify the situation. So I don't sew it through like I just did, so don't listen to me. Don't listen to little me because I'm messing up right here. Oh my goodness, now it's stuck. Oh no, it's fine. So what I do on the outside, because you can see this one, is I sew it like, I'll show you on the one. I sew it like this. So I actually sew it on the outside where you can see it. I try to make it prettier usually. Let's see. Yeah, these ones aren't so nice either. Oh. But um, yeah, I try to sew it nicer on the outside because people can actually see it. So instead of doing, I don't even know the correct term for these kinds of stitches. Like instead of the threading through method, I stitch it like across this way. So I stitch it along the end of the elastic and I keep going up it. I kind of pinch it too, just so I can get more fabric. Like this. Oh my gosh. Does anybody else get their ribbons or their threads like stuck 24 seven? I only have stuff like leotards and dance recital costumes I'm saving for a classical tutu currently, the dress ones with the wide skirts. Oh, I love those. The one that I have right now was from ballet school, actually. It's in the other room, so maybe I'll go get it. Should I go get it? Um, the one I have right now is from ballet school, and we all had to have it. It was part of our curriculum to buy these tutus because we use them as, like, practice tutus for partnering and for point class and for performances, ultimately. Um, so the nice thing about those platter tutus is if you get a really good one and invest in it, then you can get the um, costumes that have like the overlay to put on top of it. And you don't have to get multiple classical tutus. You just get the one platter tutu. My thread always gets stuck too. Oh my gosh, it gets stuck so much. It's so frustrating. Like, look at this big knot. It's just a big knot. But honestly, these shoes are not gonna be, be not gonna be seen by anybody. I started a lot there, oh my goodness. Um, they're not gonna be seen by anybody. I'm not taking a performance or anything, so I'm not really concerned. They're purely for class purposes. I mentioned in the beginning of the live, if you're just coming in here, I'm doing my first class this week, like my first ballet class. I'm thinking of vlogging that day and documenting my class. I don't want it to be like a ballet class because I can do that any day um, with you guys. Like I can do a live one day of a ballet class or I can do like an edited video like I do with my other videos, my workouts. Um, 
So I don't want it to be like that. I want it to purely be me enjoying the class. So I think I'm still going to document it. Um, kind of, should I do a video? Because I technically haven't done a full ballet class in two full years since I quit my professional career. Should I be um, making the video like, ex-professional ballerina tries ballet for the first time in two years? I'm thinking of something along those lines. I've seen that a lot out there. Um, and I'm thinking of doing that because it's been a while and it would be kind of fun to document it. Like I'm just gonna put the camera there and just kind of follow along to whatever music, where the music takes me in class. I'll do a full bar, full center with point shoes. But yeah, I think it'll be fun. Because it is different to be a dance teacher um, physically than to be a ballerina. A dance teacher, I'm just as tired as my professional ballet job um, because of the long, well, they're not super long hours because we start dance classes after kids are done school because they're in school right now in Canada, like everywhere pretty much, and they finish around three or four. So I start my day, usually if I'm teaching in the studio, around four and then end around 10. So it's tiring because I'm with kids and teaching them for five hours. And it's physical because I'm walking around the studio, correcting, showing them stuff, giving them an example for something. Um, but like the physical demands for it are way different than ballet class. Cause I don't have the stamina anymore. Like I tried to do a variation one day in the studio just for fun. Like with the kids we were learning them, what variation were we learning? We were learning, oh, I think it was Queen of Dryads and I used to be able to do it. And then I tried it. Oh my gosh. I could not get through the first half. So I was like, I'm just gonna like, I usually don't do it full out in class cause I let the kids, you know, it's their class. And I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna try it. And it did not go well with my body. Um, ooh, lucky. And yeah, on getting your tutu from the other room, that's a really good video idea. I think so too. So, um, thank you, Angie Lyon. I'm definitely going to do that video. I'm hoping tomorrow, um, if my camera has space, because it still has a lot of videos on it for my vlog, my 20 minute vlog. I don't know how the vlog got so long. Um, I hope that's not too long for you guys because I had a lot of fun that day. It was made, it was two days actually. I stayed at my mom's one night because um, I had a dentist appointment and <laughs> there's footage of me after my dentist appointment. It's kind of funny. Um, they didn't give me any like laughing gas or anything, but they did give me freezing because I had some cavities to fill in and they gave me some freezing and like half my face is just like <laughs> frozen, which is kind of funny. So I documented that, which is kind of fun, but, um, yeah. That vlog will be going out on Thursday because tomorrow I think the video that's going out is, what went out today? The kids video went out today, right? Yeah. Um, tomorrow I'm posting, no, not tomorrow, sorry, Tuesday. I think it's another workout. And you know what guys, <laughs> this happened to me twice, not once, so twice. So quick story time. You guys know how I've been doing some like workout videos. That's mostly what I've been doing lately because we just moved and I um, found that was the easiest to record while we're moving boxes and stuff. You can see some boxes still back there because we only moved in like a month ago or so or two months ago now, oh my gosh. But anyways, I've been doing a lot of workout videos. So the other day when I was filming a workout video, I set my camera up on my tripod and I'm about to do the workout. So I click record and my camera was low on battery. So to conserve battery level, after, during my 20 minute workout, it stopped recording. But it didn't tell me. Usually it like blinks when it stops recording. And it didn't. So I did the workout again. 40 minutes later, I check it. Guess what happened? The same thing. The exact same thing happened. So I tried to do the workout a third time. And guys, I kid you not, it didn't work again. 
I had to wipe my entire camera. Like there was just too much stuff on it. Um, I hadn't updated it in a long time. So I, I wiped it clean. I did a shortened version of that workout that I did for what's 20 times three, 60 minutes. So I did it for an hour and I can now walk the next day. So um, the workout's only 10 minutes now. It's not 20 anymore. It was 20, but after like 40 minutes, I was like, no, I'm done. I can't do it again. So I did it halved. So yeah, that was fun. Um, I also want to do a story time uh, video sometime. I'm just trying to think of what story times. Hmm. I know someone give me a topic and I'll think of a story time from that. Cause I have a lot of funny stories from my ballet career. I also have a lot of funny stories from ballet school and I'd love to share them. I just, I don't know where to begin. Someone give me a topic and I'll tell a story from that while I'm sewing these. I'm almost done. I have one more elastic to do and then the ribbons. Topic could be like, hmm, casting. It could be like rehearsal. What should I do? I wonder if there's a way I know. Okay. So the poll, I'm going to end the poll because I'm sewing my point shoes already. Okay. What should I tell a story time about? Oops. I misspelled about that's ah no about and then I should be able to give, um, ooh, should I do a poll? Hmm, no. Okay, there we go. What should I tell a story time about, guys? Should it be like an embarrassing ballet story? Should I tell a story time on... Let's see, maybe I can give you guys a preview and you can tell me whether or not you want to hear a story about it. Should I tell a story on like girl drama? Because there's a lot of girl drama. Should I tell a story on casting? Should I tell a story on... Mm, oh shoot, I almost messed up again. Should I tell a story about ballet class or something embarrassing that happened to me in class? I have a lot of those. What about something that happened embarrassing to me on stage? Should I tell a story on that? I need to finish this one elastic and I'll be done. Girl drama and rehearsals. Okay. So why don't we start with, hmm, which one should I start with? I'll start with girl drama. So I guess I could tell a story on hmm, rehearsal. Okay, I'm gonna start with rehearsals then. Thank you, Nika. Rehearsals, okay. Hmm. 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 There's a lot of stories. I'm trying to like narrow them down. I have like stories on the one time we went on strike, <laughs> but I don't know if legally I can say like talk about that one. Um, I have a story about, I have a story of how I met my best friend um, in rehearsal. So my best friend, Oscar, whom I'm going to be doing an interview with on my channel very soon, I met at my ballet company. So I actually met him the first day I met him was after performance. So for those of you who don't know, ballerinas usually have the summer either off or at least they have like four weeks off in the summer to give their bodies a break. And then they come back to rehearsals and classes in September. So I met my best friend. He came to the company early because he was brand new to the company. So Oscar joined in... August, technically, and I came back from Canada into Romania. I came back in September and I met him there. Um, we clicked immediately. Like, I met him at the after party for the premiere of a ballet that he was in. 
Um, and we clicked immediately. Like we were having champagne backstage, not backstage, but like in the lobby area where they give the dancer champagne after a premiere. Um, so we were having champagne together, little snacks, and we talked like all night. We were getting on really well. Um, and then we were put together for <laughs> rehearsal. Um, one of my partners, I think, injured himself in Swan Lake. So Oscar's brand new to the company and he um, is like the best. So he's brand new to the company. They throw him in to Swan Lake Act One, the waltz, which is like a 10 minute long waltz, which is one of the hardest things to learn for um, partners. And there's a lot of partnering in it. So they throw us together and they teach us like half of the whole thing, like five minutes worth of, um, uh, what's it called? Like repertoire. And they throw us together. We could not keep it together. Like we can never keep it together. Even we were partnered from that point on, like almost every ballet, I think. Like I was mostly his partner because they like, try to keep it to heights. So I wasn't one of the smallest girls in the company and I wasn't one of the tallest. So I was kind of in the middle and he's taller, but he's not like, there were some really tall guys in our company. So we were kind of put together a lot. So <laughs> now I'm thinking, okay, that rehearsal was really good actually, but the rehearsal after that for Snow White, <laughs> That was funny because that was also um, heavily partnering. It was only partnering for our part. So we could not keep it together. Like at this point, we've been best friends for over a year. And every time something funny happened, we lost our minds. We were laughing, crying, very unprofessional. Um, not unprofessional, but like we knew the choreography and everything. We were just rehearsing, but... One time on stage, when we got on stage, we were doing a pirouette. So like a double pirouette out to second and then like a little bend or something after. So double out and then we land. So the guy, when he partners the girl, goes like this around her waist and the girl stays in passe or retire and she's turning. Oh, it was to an écarté. So I was lifting my leg up to écarté. And when I did that simultaneously, I like fell right towards my leg. So I kid you not, I was like, if this is me turning, I'll put you guys up so you can see a little bit better. And again, I'm wearing shorts underneath my skirt, but this is me turning. And then I'm supposed to put my leg up like this at the end. So I'm turning like this. He's got his hands on my waist and I go like this. <laughs> and the noise that I made that came out of my mouth was like, <laughs> cause obviously you're on stage and you're trying to smile and act like everything's fine when it's going to absolute mayhem and the noise that came in my mouth, my mouth was like ah! and then I looked at him after when we did the waltz and my face was like what just happened it was so funny we laughed about it after at the moment we were like what in the heck just happened um so yeah that was really funny other rehearsal stories um let me think hmm I guess there's been a couple of times like injuries have happened in rehearsal and that's really sad. And that's just the reality of um, being a ballerina. Your extensions are gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Um, that's the one thing that hasn't really like deteriorated since I stopped ballet, luckily. Um, they're my favorite thing. Like Adagio is my favorite um, thing in ballet class. It's my favorite thing to do, Adagio and Fondue, anything that's like slow, and you know, very luxurious. Um, I'm not a fast mover in the slightest. So that was my favorite thing to do when I was a professional ballerina. And it still is my favorite thing to do once in a while. Like when I'm bored in the house, like Steve can attest to that. I'll just be like either spinning like a ballerina or I'll just be like lifting my leg like <laughs> I, um, it will never, I will never give up ballet and I will never, um, not love doing it for fun. I honestly needed to leave the atmosphere I was in. Um, you hear a lot about ballerinas having a lot of um, issues in their career. <laughs> not only body image, but like pay is terrible. It's absolutely terrible. I mean, right now, I know in the opera, they're still not getting, like nowhere pays ballerinas that well. To be completely blunt and honest, ballerinas don't get paid well at all. Like at all. If you love it enough, sure, but 
I didn't love it enough to not be able to afford food. And there was a point where I couldn't afford food or water. So because um, when I was in Europe, you also have to think about flights. You have to think about rent. You have to think about um, other expenses like point shoes, you know? And when your salary, half your salary is going to rent and then the rest of it is going towards like sustaining your life. I don't know. Plus, in Eastern Europe, they're, at least in the companies I was in, they were very outdated in their um, ideas of what a dancer and a woman should look like. Not just in ballet, but I found, um, yeah, it just wasn't a good place for me. I was always constantly told to lose weight, and I actually have a medical condition. I have hypothyroidism, so it's really hard for me to lose weight. Um, and it's hard for me to, like, it's not hard for me to gain weight, actually. It's hard for me to lose weight. I've been at a stable, like, um, physique since I quit ballet. I used to yo-yo a lot because people would tell me, you need to lose 10 pounds in two weeks. And, like, my brain would just be spinning. Um, so, yeah. Um, that stuff is terrible that they don't get well-deserved pay. It is. It's, it's unfortunate. It's just how it is. I think of it that ballerinas don't contribute the same way that doctors do, but they pay the same amount in school fees. If you think about point shoes, you think about um, how expensive ballet boarding school is. So I don't know if that's a flaw in the ballet system or a flaw in the payment, because I know the opera singers and orchestra got paid way better than the ballerinas did and they yeah I could do a whole video on that but they got paid a lot better than us they got paid like two times or triple the salary than we did <laughs> and that's just the truth <laughs> I can say it now because I don't go there anymore but and I didn't didn't specify which company that was so anyways this is my point shoes all sewn the elastics are sewn completely. So now I just have to do the ribbons. So do you guys want to see what it looks like without the ribbons versus with the ribbons? I'll show you what my shoes look like now. And I actually should try them on to see how they fit now. It's getting kind of dark out here too. I live in um, Canada and it's kind of cold, but it's like rainy. We got a lot of snow the other day, um, which is kind of festive. We're putting up our Christmas tree later today too. Um, and since I'm doing a live already now, I'm going to do another live this afternoon with Steven. I'm going to have a special guest, um, while we put up our Christmas tree. Should we do it on TikTok or Instagram? I don't know. Can I shine your shoes? They're already pretty shiny. Um, but thank you for the offer. They're very shiny. I don't think they would need any more shine. Okay. So this is what the one looks like I've had on for the last hour and it's already completely sewn. With the ribbons and the elastics, this one's sewn. This one has just the elastic sewn on, and you can already tell the difference from before. Like before, I couldn't roll through. Right now, I can go from up. Ooh, it's slippery in this floor. I can go from all the way being up, demi point up, demi point up. I would love to do a ballet class or a point class on live next time. I'm gonna do a point class now that my shoes are almost sewn. But, um, yeah, this one already looks a lot better now that the elastics are sewn on because now I can roll through it. Boop. Yeah, so now I'm going to sew on the ribbons, which I can't remember where I put them actually. I think they're in the other room. I'm going to go grab them. I know they're in the other room, so I'll be right back in like one minute. I'm going to take the shoe off because otherwise if I walk down the stairs with point shoes, I'm going to die. <laughs> So I'll be right back, guys. I'm going to go get the ribbon.
So, I couldn't find it. I don't know where I put my ribbon. I think I actually, which is right next to me, which is kind of silly. So I think it's actually in this. No, where is it? Where's my ribbon? Hmm. I know I put it somewhere safe that Luna couldn't get to it. Hmm. I look silly with my hair like this. <laughs> you know what? I think I'm going to have to do what I didn't want to do. And I'm going to have to take off my old ribbons. But this is what I sew them like on the inside. I'm going to sew them on the outside though. So these are the freeds. Before I take these ribbons off, I'm actually going to try them on to show you the difference between freeds and gator mindens. Um, so yeah, I'm actually going to do a poll too. What shoes do you guys like better? What shoes are prettier? Gainers or breeds? Okay, let's see. What shoes are prettier? So I'm gonna try on the Gainer Minden that's sewed completely. Someone said Gainers already. Oh no, that's just my thingy, my notification thingy. So I'm gonna try on the Gainer Minden first. This is on one side. Okay. I always forget that I'm kind of fast at sewing shoes now because I used to have to do that in the wings like really, 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 really quickly. Okay, and then I'll put one freed on. Free point shoes. I hear a bark. I don't think that's our doggy. I think it's another doggy because our doggy's out with Steven right now on a walk. <laughs> okay. So you can already tell the difference with these freeds. They're dead. <laughs> I actually have one video that's my most viewed video on my page on my channel. Um, it has like 70,000 views right now and it's my point shoes. It's a short. Guys, the comments in that, they did not come to play. People were like, your shoes are so dead. You need a higher vamp. You need this. Like everybody diagnosing the shoes, which I love because I love um, input and constructive criticism. But I had no idea that A, it would blow up and B, it would um, cause such controversy. I was just like spinning in my shoes. Like I was just doing this. So it was just zoomed up on my feet and I was just like, woo, something like that. But what do you like better, guys? Do you guys like the freeds better? Or do you like the gainers? So here's both. The freeds are much more supple. You can see the difference. My dummy point versus the gainers. The gainers are still brand new, that being said. But the freeds are also much lighter. They're like super soft right now. They're also super dead. Ooh, gainers. People voted the gainers. I like the gainers too, to be honest. I'll show you guys just the shoes. Just the shoes. I feel like this is what my TikTok page always looks like. It looks like just girls doing releves and stuff. So these are the gainers. And these are the freeds. I can feel the floor so much in the freeds. I feel so wobbly, oh my gosh. I keep wobbling forward, like a lot. Which ones are nicer? I'm kind of a sucker for freeds, to be honest. Um, they just feel more like supple when you wear them. But they don't work for me as well because they, you can already tell they're super dead. They get super dead super easily. What kind of elastic and ribbons do you use? Oh, good question. I did mention it earlier, but if you're just popping on, 
I use the, I have the bag for them. I use these ones from the shoe room. They're the stretchy, I think something, I don't know what that means. <laughs> the stretchy ribbons. So I use the ribbons that are super stretchy. And then the elastics I use are just the regular ones that you get at the shoe room. Like, oh, I don't have elastics on these shoes actually. I have just these elastics that are just the normal ones. I know some people prefer the see-through looking ones, like the white ones that are see-through, but these ones are stronger in my opinion. And then same with the elastics. I know some people have different elastics that have the elastic at the back, like actually this kind of fabric at the back. But I prefer these ones because then you can pull them really tight if you need to. So I use the stretchy ribbons. Plus, you'll notice when I do an échappé or plié, when I come from point, when I come from being up point, oh my gosh, I can't speak. When I come from being up on point and I do a plié, they don't get loose, which is super nice. Versus the shiny elastics or the shiny ribbons, they would get super loose. So I do a plié and they kind of like floop out here, if that's the right word. So these ones don't get loose. So then they stay on my foot better. So yeah. Don't mind the dog bed behind me again. <laughs> I'm so excited to take class again, guys. Oh my gosh, I want to take class like right now. <laughs> but I'm not done sewing. <laughs> so I'll put you guys back up there. And I will continue my job. Also, you're making art amazing arches, by the way. Thank you. Honestly, I see a lot of like products that people sell online where it's like a foot stretcher. Do you guys want to know how I stretch my foot? I saw a TikTok of this the other day, and it was like America, and they had all these foot stretchers, and then Russia and all the girls were doing this. And that's exactly what I did. In my dad's office, he had a couch in the basement. So I would just sit there like this and just like chill until my feet would touch the floor. Because at first when I started, I couldn't do this. It would be like probably here. And I would just gently stretch them like this. And now they just, this one's not as flexible. <laughs> but yeah, now I just stay. And I'm not even doing anything. They just flop. So yeah, I would like stretch like this. I'm stretching a split like this too. So I put one leg back into a full split and I just stretch my feet this way. But yeah, that's how I gained flexibility in my feet. I kind of always had flexible-ish feet, if that makes any sense. I always remember that not everybody wants flexible feet and that sounds so weird <laughs> to say like, you know, you don't say to most normal people like you have great feet. They're super archy. Like that's such a dancer thing. Um, oh, let's see the vote. So far gainers are winning. I'm kind of happy because I love freeds, but the gainers, honestly, they, um, they just fit my foot. They just fit. So I'm going to go up again. Plus, they're way easier to balance in. Like, balancing in gainers is one of the easiest things. Watch, I say that and I'm not going to be able to balance. Um, but yeah. I'm thinking of doing this live, like, weekly now. It's kind of fun. Like, I don't have anything else to do on Sundays either. Our internet was down yesterday too. So I was kind of nervous. Um, our server was down. So actually some of my classes I had to cancel yesterday because our server was down. So I was really nervous that the live wouldn't work, but I'm happy it's working for everybody. Uh. This floor is like so slippery. Oh my goodness, I'm not warm for that in the slightest. <laughs> I feel like freeds look prettier when you're not on point because gainers, I don't know, they look kind of chunky to me, but the freeze just kind of flow really pretty, you know? Like when you're in an arabesque, whoops. Ooh, it's so slippy in this floor. But yeah, I feel like the freeze just look prettier, not on point. 
I only read new chapters of Dr. Stone every Sunday than nothing else. Who's Dr. Stone? I never heard of that as a book. Oh, people are voting gainers. Gainers are winning. Dr. Stone, I'm looking for a new book to read, but I always say that. And then I remember that I have a billion books in my bookshelf that I still have to read. Um, my focus is not that good. If you guys couldn't tell, I've got terrible attention span. Terrible. Like I'm either really, really, really hyper-focused on something until it's completely done. Oh, I don't want to use old ribbons, but whatever. Um, <laughs> or I can't focus for the life of me. And that's why I rely on coffee. <laughs> coffee and snacks. Speaking of which, before this, I had um, a tofu scramble that I made the other day that I made in my vlog that'll be up on Thursday. And um, what else did I have? Oh, I had a whole pita. <laughs> it was so good with some hummus. I love pita, that's my favorite snack. We get the little, Round ones too. We get the big ones and the little ones. Um, they're so delicious. Oh, they're so good. I love pita. Who else likes pita? What books do you like to read? Oh, that's a tricky one. Um, I like a lot of different types of books, but to be honest, my favorites are true crime. Like I saw a TikTok the other day of a guy saying, what like women really do just watch true crime documentaries to relax and unwind and then listen to true crime podcasts and videos to fall asleep too and I literally do that at night like I'll watch like on YouTube if Steve's not here especially just because I can't fall asleep you would think it would be the opposite that I couldn't watch something scary when I'm alone but I don't know it calms me <laughs> it's really weird so I like to read um anything that's like a thriller kind of scary like I like Stephen King um if you, oh, it's over there now, but the book, I'll go get it. I love to read stuff like this. This is my favorite book. Salem's Lot by Stephen King. This one's my favorite. It also looks like I'm not wearing pants. I am wearing pants, I promise. Um, <laughs> this is Salem's Lot by Stephen King, and it's my favorite book. It is uh, absolutely my favorite. Um, it's an anime and manga, really. Good one, too. There's a lot of science stuff in it, but it's fun. Ooh, I'll have to check it out because I love watching anime. We watched, I'd love to start Demon Slayer. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about it, but we watched, what did we watch? Seven Deadly Sins. Um, Stephen really likes that show, so we watched that. We also watched, what else did we watch? <gasps> Honestly, anything Studio Ghibli warms my heart. Studio Ghibli is my Favorite thing it is my favorite. Um, I'm actually doing a ballet solo this year with one of my students for competition, and she's dancing to Howl's Moving Castle. You know the one that's um. Whatever it is, I can't sing, but yeah, Stephen King is wonderful. It's awesome. Um, Gerald's Game's really good too. I know they made a Netflix movie on it. Um, Salem's Lot is my favorite Stephen King. Carrie's really good. Um, when I was in school, I reread, oh, what was it? Um, Carrie, I reread a ton in school. I used to read Stephen King a lot. And every time he had a new book out, I was like the first there. Um, I haven't read it though. It just seems daunting to me and huge. And I'm terrified of clowns. I can't stand clowns. I really can't. So I haven't read it. Um, but I want to read Dr. Sleep. I want to read it and then watch the movie because I know the movie just came out too for Dr. Sleep. Um, and my mom said it's amazing. So I definitely want to check it out. Whenever people say like that I have to watch a show, I have to watch it. Same thing as Tiger King when everybody watched it. It was like good. It was good, but it was okay. Like I've seen better series. Like Squid Game was better than Tiger King for sure. Um, but I still have to watch it because everybody else said it was amazing. But um, what shows are you guys watching on Netflix right now? Sorry, I'm sitting on the ground, so it's really uncomfortable <laughs> on my like foot and bones and stuff. Like, you know, like my ankle bone. So it's, I'm trying to find a way. I don't want to sit on the dog bed because that's her bed. It's not my bed. We don't let her go on our bed. So why would I go on her bed? 
The main reason for that being not letting her on her bed is because we live um, in rural Ontario. So we don't live in the city. We live in rural Ontario. Like the population here is like nothing. It's like less than 1,000 people. It's less than like, yeah, it's definitely less than it would be like Toronto's like millions. Um, so because we live in rural Ontario, we have a lot of trees, a lot of foliage, and our dog goes outside a lot, obviously, because she's a dog, and she carries ticks on her sometimes, um, and Lyme disease is a thing here, so we don't let her go on her bed, because the number of times we've let her on her bed and then we find ticks, it's not okay. Steven actually had a tick in his leg last year. It's really gross. Poor thing. I know he's not watching this either, so I can talk all about Steven I want. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not going to gossip about him. Maybe just a little bit. Um, so yeah. So I'm sewing the ribbons on the outside, guys. And I'm sewing them literally on the outside, on the other side of the... If you can see where the elastic is. I'm sewing the ribbon directly on top. Just like that. push through. I'm glad I did this after because I usually do the ribbons before um, and then they get all tangled up. Ah, oh, as I said that, as I said, they get all tangled up. Look what happened. They got all tangled up. Also, my battery is about to die on my MacBook, so I'm going to go grab the charger. I'm at 9% and I don't want you guys to leave. Um, okay, I'll be right back. It's in the other room. Obviously, everything's in the other room. Here we go. Got the charger. Got the point shoes. 3%. Can I do it? I hope so. If I leave randomly, that's why. Come on, you can do it. Feels like Mission Impossible music should be on right now. Is it charging? Yes. That's the golden sound. Um, so there we go. Okay, now it's all set up. So if you're new on this live, I'm sewing my point shoes. And if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Jazz McDonald. I post ballet and fitness related videos every single Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Um, recently today I posted my kids video. Um, I really enjoy doing those. Um, I can't actually decide which videos are my favorite to film. What are your favorite videos to watch, guys? Do you like watching, like, leotard hauls? Do you guys watch my ballet videos? Like, just the random... I posted a random one last week that was just me dancing, and that was fun. I actually wanted, like, a new YouTube channel trailer, so that's why I posted it on Thursday. Um, what are your favorite videos to watch of mine? Do you like watching vlogs? Do you like watching, like... Do you like watching this kind of stuff? Like, would you just want to hang out with me? I like this personally. There's like no pressure. We're just hanging out, having a good old time. I'm thinking of starting a series too on the home renovation process because I gave a little mini tour of our home, but there's a lot of work to be done. Like the bathroom's not finished at all. Like the floors aren't even floors. So we have to do that. Um, I'd like to redo my dance room because right now it has carpet, so I can't dance um at all in the carpet like i'm pretty sure i sprained my ankle the other day i'm pretty sure i did i like the live so do i there's so much fun it's kind of like um my q a like i get to connect with you guys a bit more um and it feels really personal which is really fun and really nice and refreshing versus just like me with the camera alone I know I'm not alone because you guys are going to watch it, but the whole process is just me. Like, if you think about it, I'm filming, and then I have to edit it. Like, that's, like, me for alone for a few hours. This editing takes me a couple of hours. For, like, the workout videos, it doesn't take me too long. 
But um, for like vlogs and stuff, if I have like three hours of footage, like I did on my birthday, I cut it down to like nine minutes. But I like the lives. I think I just had an idea. What would you guys think of doing a live for Q and A's? Like rather than doing a monthly Q and A, like I mentioned in my vlog coming up, rather than doing a monthly Q and A, like me filming and answering questions, would you guys prefer lives? The only problem is um, not everybody's available at the same time. Like the nice thing about making videos instead of lives is that you can watch it any time. So like if you had a question and you you were at work or you were in the middle of doing something that day or you couldn't make it to my live, then you can always watch the video later. Because I don't think these save. I don't think these lives save. I know they do on Instagram, but I don't think YouTube saves them. Um, what do you think? The nice thing about the lives too is that you're like live. You're it's crazy thought that you're with people in that moment, you know. Um, you're doing the exact you're doing whatever you are, you're living, you're breathing. And those people are too, and you're hanging out with them virtually. It's kind of cool. So I got the ribbon sewed on. And then just sew like oh a little bit. I don't sew the whole thing. See, I just sew around the edge, at the bottom, at the top. It looks really messy and I clean that up later. I cut off all the frays. Um, so I'm gonna do the other side and then I'll be done my point shoes and then I'm gonna sew my ballet shoes. Those literally take two seconds because I just do the same kind of stitching I do earlier. Um, I don't even need to sew them, but it's just nice to have them sewn. It's funny because those shoes for boys come sewn. But for women, they don't come sewn. Meaning, they like they're the exact same fit of shoes. So I used to order the men's, um, but they were out of the men's. So I got them off Amazon. They were out of the men's ones. So I ordered the women's, and they weren't sewn. But the men's ones are sewn. It's funny. Maybe they just know. But like, I feel like Steve's a better sewer than I am. I've seen him sew things before. He's actually pretty good. I'm not. <laughs> I mean, it works, but it doesn't look pretty. So yeah, yep, almost done the point shoes. So I have my thread, my needle. Have you guys ever seen the Nutcracker? Who on here has seen the Nutcracker? Or who's going to see it? Because I know in a lot of places, like in Toronto, I think they're having a Nutcracker, I could be wrong. I hope so, I hope that they're doing live shows again soon. Honestly, I've been so out of touch with reality. <laughs> I've been so out of touch with what's going on. Um, like I, I've been in touch with what's going on in the world, but like in terms of lockdown, I think there's just been so many in Canada, all of us are like, I don't know. I've just accepted the fact I have to go where I have to go and I have to be where I have to be and I'm at home when I have to be at home and I'm, you know, but um, who's seeing the Nutcracker this year? Or who's seen the live action version of the Nutcracker? I'm actually in the Nutcracker this year. <gasps> Congratulations. Oh my gosh, what role are you doing? That's so exciting. I'm jealous, I wanna be in the Nutcracker. I've actually never been in the Nutcracker. Oh, that's a lie. I was gonna say I've never been in the Nutcracker. Um, I've never been the Nutcracker in ballet school because I joined too late, but I was in the Nutcracker in Romania for one year. I did it for one year. I saw it a few years ago and I loved it. I love the Nutcracker. It just, I know it's kind of like every ballerina's a nightmare because you perform it so many times. Like the one year I did it, we performed it like, <laughs> we did like almost 50 shows. Um, don't know if I'm going to see it this year, but I'll ask. Congrats. Yeah, congrats. Um, that's exciting. What roles did you do? I'm in the Walls of the Flowers and Claire's Friends. Oh my gosh, those are the exact same roles I did too. That's so much fun. When I was in the company, they actually didn't have kids do the like, kids. They were called Kupi because <laughs> um, I lived in Romania. They didn't have kids do the kids. They had dancers do the kids and they pretty much chose like the smallest girls and the ones that like look like kids the most, I guess. Um, I'm obviously in there because I don't look like I'm 25. I look like I'm 16. I act like I'm 16. I, you know, 
Um, I just look young. So regardless, I was casted as one of Claire's friends, which is like one of the kids' roles. And I was also in Lost Flowers. I was a snowflake. Um, I wasn't anything special in that character. Like I never got cast in anything like a soulless role. Um, we had, I forget who casted it, but it was definitely not somebody who liked me that much. <laughs> um, yeah, that's awesome. That's so much fun. I want to be in the Nutcracker again. Aw. Oh, wait, I did it wrong again. <gasps> I got distracted because I was so excited for you being the Nutcracker. I ruined my shoes again. I'm almost done, though. Yay! So I'm happy that I'm doing this today because I had the option of doing this or point class or ballet class. Actually, point class wasn't an option because they weren't sewn, but ballet class I thought about doing. I'm happy that I'm sewing my shoes. Um, firstly, because I can answer questions from you guys and actually talk to you guys and hang out. Secondly, now I can start doing point class again. I missed wearing point shoes. Like, I know I wear them around the house, but I wear them like when they're super dead and just like having fun and, you know, messing around the house. <laughs> I know, I keep messing up, but that's fine. It's fine. I got through it. I'm all good. Um, we've been going for an hour and a half. That's awesome. I was like at first, oh, I'm probably not going to get that many people coming on the live. Like, I'm sure only like maybe my mom's going to watch. <laughs> but we got quite a few people. I'm so excited. I'm happy people are commenting too and enjoying this because I'm enjoying this. Especially because I don't have any friends up here, to be honest. I have like no friends right now. Up here at least. Like I have friends. They're just not in my country. Um, I have one friend that's in my country. I have a couple friends. Okay, I'm lying. I have multiple friends in my country, but they're just not close to me. They're like three hours away or something. Like my best friend Kaylee, who just had her baby last year. So cute. Um, she lives about three hours away. My other friends, I have two friends that are two sisters. They live in Toronto. Um, I saw them recently. I saw them. No, I was gonna say I saw them recently, but I saw them before COVID. So that's how long has COVID been? Two years. So I saw them right before COVID and I miss them. I have another friend in Toronto. Um, she lives with her boyfriend. Actually, she was the last person I saw before the lockdown because me, her, her boyfriend and my boyfriend went on a dinner date in Toronto, like downtown Toronto. And me and Steven actually went to the Christmas market the year before COVID. It was so cute. Would you guys enjoy, like, I know people, a lot of people do, like, a uh, boyfriend tag. Should I do a boyfriend tag with Steven? Do you guys want him featured on the channel? I mean, obviously you do. He's awesome. I think that'd be fun. We're doing a live later this afternoon, me and Steven, decorating our Christmas tree. Um, should we do it on Instagram or on TikTok? Because I can't do another one on YouTube because, like, I don't know if the platform will let me, <laughs> to be honest. I'm just kidding. Of course, they welcome us. As long as you're on here, right? It's the same idea with just putting yourself out there. You have nothing to lose, right? I think that's what a lot of platforms want. They just want people to be on the platform and watch and stream content on their platforms. That's obviously good for them. And they want to help out other creators just have a voice. That's the whole point of YouTube and Instagram, everything. Just give people a voice. And I love that. Okay, guys, I am done. I am done after I cut this. I'm done. They're obviously not cleaned up or anything, and I haven't um, cut the drawstrings, but my point shoes are done being sewn. I said that really loud, and I'm sorry if, if you're listening on headphones. I'm a loud person. I actually had a student tell me the other day, he said, um, what did he say? He was like, he was an online student, and he was like, what did he say? Oh yeah, um, you have to, to stop talking um, what do you say? Too excited. 
I was like, well, I'm trying to be excited for you. Like, I don't know what you want. It's cute. Yeah! They are sewn! Finally! Okay, so moment of truth. Do they fit? Yes, I got them on my foot, so they obviously fit. But here's the one that I've had on for the last hour and a half. So I have this one sewn, and this one sewn now too. So I'm gonna, if you guys weren't here before, I kind of gave a little um, how to tie your ribbons and um, put on your shoes, like tie them really tightly. So I have the elastic ribbons, and I cross one on top, I go around, and I don't put it past this part of my ankle. I just want it above my ankle bone. And then I take the inside, I pull it really tight, and I tie it a bunch of times. That one actually fits pretty perfectly. So what I'm going to do now, kind of final touches for my point shoes is, well, I'm not going to do it while I have them on because that's just dumb. I don't want to burn myself, but I would cauterize them with a the lighter, which I have over there. Um, but this is what the final product looks like when they're all sewn. I'll show you guys both on point. Ooh, all my ankle bones cracking. But yeah, they're all sewn completely. They feel a lot more stable. Like I could do some chapeys and stuff and feel like I'm not gonna, ooh, it's so slippery in here, but I'm not gonna fall on my face. I'm like shaking the whole room, oh my gosh. I should not do that, but they're sewn! Yay! So here's the first one. Again, I have to clean this up and just cut them, but this part's pretty good. And I'll show this side, whoop. Very strange angle, and then here's the other one. <laughs> Again, not cleaned up or anything, but they work for point class, for ballet class. Ta-da! They're all sewn. And I'll show you guys even closer up. Why do my feet look so big right now? They're like, honk, honk. <laughs> I don't know, they look so big. But yeah, that's what they look like all sewn. Ta-da! Oh my gosh, my toenails feel like they're getting squished so much because I've had these on for an hour and 45 minutes. Or an hour and 42, really. But yeah, let me know if you guys want like a point class now. Eee, sliding out. <laughs> but yeah, they're completely sewn. Let's see if I can balance, ready? Okay, now I'm hanging on to the chair behind me. I'm gonna let go in three, Woo. two, one. Not bad, Whee! oh my goodness. Okay, that's enough for today. <laughs> but yeah, these are completely sewn. This is what they look like all sewn. They're a lot more stable um, than before. But yeah, they're all sewn. I'll show you even closer. Ta-da. I just moved my stitch kit by accident. Yay, I'm so happy I got them sewn and I'm so glad you guys could join me for that. That was fun. Um, Last but not least, my ballet shoes. The point shoes take, they don't usually take me this long, but I got very distracted by a lot of things. <laughs> Answering questions, talking to you guys, hanging out. I want it to be kind of like a chill experience rather than like, I don't know, I don't do ASMR or anything like that, but. I wanted to just be like you and me hanging out. So I hope that was fun for you guys. Um, let's go to my ballet shoes because that one's going to be super duper easy. My shoes are so. I'll show you <laughs> close up too. Ta da! 
See, I would just cut that off. And now that I have them off, I have my lighter. Ballerina tip, a lot of dancers do this. They take a lighter or if you're not allowed to use a lighter yet and you're at home, um, your parents won't let you use lighter or you're just too scared to use lighter. I take the lighter like this. And now you see on the edge, it's like, it's sealed. It's all sealed. And I do the same to the other side. So again, take the lighter, got the point shoe. <laughs> this would have been a good thumbnail. Like I'm gonna light my point shoes on fire. I'm just kidding, I'm not, sort of. So I'm gonna use the lighter just to take the phrase off. Be careful you don't light them on fire if you are using a lighter and you let it harden before you touch it. Nice. Um, let's go to the next one. Here's my other point shoe. This is the one I actually sewed. So again, it's not pristine sewing, but it is what it is. So I take the lighter. That's exactly where I need to have cut. Be careful you don't melt them because they smell really bad. And yeah, you see how it's like cauterized? And then the last one. Last one. And those are done. Now the ballet shoes are, you know, they're the easiest thing. You just have to do the same kind of thing. You put them on. So I'll show you. So my butt, put them on. Now these look a lot different than point shoes. So if you're not familiar with ballerinas, we have these kinds of shoes, these ballet shoes, which are just like soft shoes for you to practice in. So you see how much more flexible they are than point shoes. So point shoes are these ones, right? They're hard on the box. Um, they don't bend as much and they allow you to stand on your toes. These ones you don't stand on your toes with. You just use them for ballet class to do like bar with and some center. But these ones we still wear a lot. So what you do is the same thing you do with the point shoes. You take the elastics, you put them across, you would kind of mark them to where you need them to be. Then you can cut them and just sew them on the outside just so that they don't pop off. So I take off about that much. And I do the same on the other side. You don't even really need to measure them out that much. Like as long as they're tight enough for you that they're not falling off, they also come with a drawstring so they don't come off. And see how much more flexible they are? It's supposed to be like you're not wearing point shoes essentially. So that when you do class and you're doing your bar and stuff, you can really feel the floor when you're doing tendus, you're doing rond de jambes, stuff like that. Even jumps, fondue, well fondue you don't use the floor. But these are just practice. They're a lot more easy to wear <laughs> than point shoes. And obviously I can't stand on my toes in these. I would kill my poor little toes. So I'm gonna put these on. I'm gonna sew these on and then I'll be done. Done sewing all my stuff, doing my chores. Now these literally take like two minutes. You'll see. So I've got, this is the left foot. I've been wearing them a lot um, because I teach in them. These are the shoes I teach in. So I don't teach in the point shoes. I teach in the ballet shoes. So these ones I never sew on the outside because that would be ugly on these. So I sew them on the inside. I kind of mark off where they need to be. And the same thing, I sew them right beneath the seam. So this one actually has this, which I don't need. I'm gonna sew them, oh my gosh, so many stickers. Do any stickers, Sancha? <laughs> and I wear the Sancha ballerina slippers too. What ballet shoes do you guys wear if you guys wear ballet shoes? I wear the Sanchas personally. Um, they're really flexible, but they still give me a bit of support, I find, because I used to wear the Angelo Lucios, and those I found my heels would hurt a lot because they don't have like cushion on the bottom. So when you're standing on your feet all day and you're jumping, I just felt like it wasn't giving me a lot of support to land. Um, what do you guys wear though? So yeah, these literally I just sew on the inside. I don't care what they look like because 
Nobody sees these on the inside. So I just sew them like this, straight through. You don't even really need to sew these all the way around either. Like I just sew them on the edge pretty much. And the backs are always sewn on already with these ones. Um, I'm actually gonna sew these straight through too. The backs are already always sewn on with these. Now point shoes don't come sewn. Ballet slippers come half sewn usually for women. For men, like I said before, they're already sewn, which like <laughs> is so funny. I guess they realize maybe the men don't, aren't as likely to sew. Like, I don't know if that's like reverse um, misogyny or like, I don't know, um, but it's funny to me. So yeah, the women's aren't sewn for whatever reason and the men's are. Maybe they just know men wouldn't sew. I don't know, it's funny because I know lots of men who are better sewers than me. Steven's an example. <laughs> but I'm forced to sew because it doesn't come sewn for me. Okay, so I'm done one. And on this one, I just sewed the top. I did not sew it anywhere else. I just sewed the edge. So where's everybody from that's watching? Are you guys from Canada as well? Are you from the US? I know a lot of my viewers are from Spain. Um, are you guys from Spain? Where are you guys from that are watching? Let's see, I'm gonna comment. Why is everything in caps? There we go. Where is everybody from? Not in a creepy way, just like, what country are you from? <laughs> like, I always find it so interesting watching my analytics, like seeing my analytics of viewers. Like I get a lot of viewers from Japan, Spain, like places I've never been, which is so cool. Do we have anybody from Spain? Or do we have anybody from, let's name a country. Anybody from America? Anybody from Canada? Anybody from Switzerland? It'd be a fun game, like, when I name your country, comment. <laughs> Do I have any Romanians on my channel? I honestly don't see a lot of Romanians on my channel. Um, but I, like, to be fair, I don't talk a lot about my experiences in Romania, and I don't talk about Romania a lot. Would you guys like to hear more, like, story times on my professional ballerina career? Like, would that be interesting to you? Okay, that's one sewn already. I'm done. So I've got one shoe sewn, and that was super easy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So let's see how this one fits. It might be too tight, I'm thinking. Ta da! It's perfect. Yeah, this one works fine. Sometimes I've twisted my elastics before where they're like not flat and it bugs me so much. Has anybody else done that? It's the worst. Last one. <laughs> it is the worst. Now I like, again, sew them all funny. So I'm just gonna untie this if I can. I have the most brittle nails because for one whole year before COVID, I had acrylics. I haven't had them since the first lockdown, I think. Um, no, no, since the second, because I started getting acrylics when I was working a retail job. I worked at Old Navy for six months. Um, the reason being for the short amount of time is actually because they closed again. And like, I just want to pursue YouTube and pursue, um, my ballet studio online, which I have is lwldstutoring.ca. Um, and I didn't have time for my retail job as well as teaching. So I left my retail job. Um, but that being said, I used to get acrylics when I was working retail because all the girls did get acrylics done when they worked in retail. 
Um, I think because when you're in customer service, they see your hands a lot when you're helping out with like, I was at the cash most of the time. So people saw my hands all the time. It's also a very North American thing to get acrylics, like really long ones too. Um, I didn't get them before really when I was dancing, A, because it was annoying and like to dance with and B, I didn't have the money, <laughs> quite frankly. Steve's on a long walk, oh my goodness. All right, guys, we're almost done our shoes. Almost done. Now these ones I have to measure out too. Now this one, I lost the drawstring, which is so annoying. I'm very disappointed in myself for doing that again. Does anybody listen to Taylor Swift's um, album or remastered album, I guess? I know a lot of people are like, talking about it on TikTok and Instagram, especially in relation to All Too Well, that song. Um, I wasn't a Swifty, to be honest. I didn't like her because, you know, media made her out to be a villain. And I don't know, maybe I was a bit of a pick me girl when I was younger. It was like, oh my gosh, I don't like girly things and blah, blah, blah. Um, now I am just, you know, I like what I like kind of grown out of that phase. We all go through that phase kind of trying to act cool or whatever. Um, so I didn't like Taylor Swift before, but when she came out with um, Evermore, oh my goodness, or Folklore, I forget which album was. I think those are two separate albums. Those are my favorite albums by Taylor Swift. Um, I didn't like Red as much. Not that I don't like her or her singing. It just isn't the kind of music I generally listen to. Um, I like listening to like folky music, country music, um, not so much country actually, more like folk, indie. Um, I kind of like everything. Like I like pop and I like rap. <laughs> I like R&B. Um, the only one I don't like that much is electronic. I'm not so into electronic music. I'm into some of it. Like, I don't know, I've been listening to the album from the show You. If anybody's seen that show, amazing. Um, they have a lot of cool music in there, really cool. So yeah, anything like it's on there, <laughs> pretty much. So guys, I'm almost done. I have one so one more to go. I'm so weird, I'm sorry. <laughs> so here's the one so look at how big my bunions are too. Ooh, you can see them, so gross. I have one more to sew and then I'll be done and then I'm gonna go um, do my chores because I have to do my chores today I have to vacuum because our dog is shedding you're from Brazil oh my goodness that's so far away that's so cool what time is it in Brazil now even it must be like so you guys are east from us so you're ahead of us so right now it's about two o'clock in the afternoon I'd say yeah, it's two o'clock. Two o'clock. And yeah, it must be like five o'clock there or four o'clock in Brazil. Maybe. I'm really bad at time differences. One of my clients is in New Zealand and I'm terrible with time differences. It's four o'clock there. Oh, I was close. I was close. <laughs> That's cool. So it's like getting later for you. Um... I'm pretty much done, guys. Before I go, do you guys want to see my point shoes one more time? Like point shoes that are sewn. I sewed my point shoes. Or do you guys want to see it up close? Because I can put them on again. There we go. Okay. I don't think there's a lot of ballerinas on like B 
these kinds of platforms like lives and stuff. Like I know there's a lot of ballet content on YouTube, obviously, and TikTok and Instagram, but I didn't see like any ballet lives. It was mostly like video games, like eating channels, stuff like that. Um, so I was kind of nervous to be honest, but I was very pleased with the outcome. Like there's so many interesting people joining. So I have my shoes also now and they're all ready to do class and not fall off my feet or snap back at me. So yeah, my shoes are done. Um, and my point shoes are also all sewn. All sewn. Well, that was really fun to be hanging out with people and not just doing this alone in our house, just like literally alone and like, I don't know what else I would be doing, watching the show while doing it. Um, so it did feel like I was hanging out with a friend, which was really, really cool. Um, thanks again, guys, for watching. I'm about to hop off now and go do my chores, like cleaning the dishes and the vacuuming. Me and Steven split up the chores. Um, I think he's caught up on his. I'm not caught up in mine, so I'm going to go do those. But yeah, it was really fun to hang out with you guys. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks again for watching. Stay safe. And I guess I'll say bye now. I don't want to leave, but like our house is a mess. <laughs> okay, guys. Bye.